show. A wise friend of mine once asked me if I could remember what my main worry was last year or six months ago or even six weeks ago. And, you know, it was very difficult for me to recall exactly because in the meantime, life and time have presented different worries, which seems to be, thank heaven, a normal procedure for us human beings. And we think that our story tonight is an excellent example of a larger problem wiping out a present dilemma. Now, it's Jeff Birch who's going to tell you the story of his wife's dilemma. There it was. Just another stop signal on a street corner. No reason to suspect it was going to set our lives off on a tangent that was as frightening and senseless as a nightmare. Are you all right, Jeff? This would happen. It won't hold us up long. I'm sure there wasn't any damage done. How do you get that noise no damage done? Not to your car, maybe, but look at mine. Take a look at that fender. How can you tell? All your fenders are so banged up. Well, so that's it. Now I suppose you'll tell me your signal before you start. Well, I did signal. If your brakes had held, this wouldn't have happened. Just because I got an old car and you got a new one, right away my brakes are to blame. Now, look, I don't want to argue. I'm taking my wife home from the hospital and I'm in a hurry, so... I'll say you're in a hurry driving like that. So I'll give you my insurance agent's card. Oh, I see. You don't want to be bothered no more. Now, listen. I'll write my own name and phone number on the back. Fat lot of good that'll do my fender. Jeff, what's taking so long? It's nothing, dear. Nothing, he says. Nothing. My fender's crumbled up like an accordion to him. It's nothing. Look, mister. You had plenty of time to stop, so why do you blame my husband? Because it was his fault. It was all his fault. It's the craziest thing I ever Lady. heard. Lady. It's absolutely crazy. Lady. Well, what? You shouldn't have said that, lady. I don't like to be called that. Oh, she didn't mean anything. Come on. If she didn't mean anything, why'd she say it? It's an expression, that's all. Besides, my, my wife isn't herself at the moment. She's just out of the hospital after a very bad automobile accident. I'll bet and it all was this a bad only accident if you was driving her. No, her mother was driving and she was killed. I'm sorry, dear. I was only trying to make him understand. It's all right. You stopped trying to put her through a ringer. She had no right to call me... That. I don't feel good, Jeff. Can we go? Oh, of course, dear. You'll be hearing from me, Mr. Birch. Here you are, baby. Uh, oh, home. Home. Blessed home. You know, Jeff, I feel better already. No, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Let me take your coat. Thanks. It's only riding in a car that seems to upset you. A little pampering, you'll soon get over that. I'm afraid I've had too much pampering already. Uh, you know, that weird character didn't help any. If he wasn't one for the books, I'll eat my hat. Well, that he was. I... Tell me, tell me. Oh. I'm sorry. That creep seems to make me more nervous than I realized. No, no, no. I'll get it. I'll get it. All right, dear. I'll put your things away. Hello? 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 Wrong number? Whoever it was hung up. Ah. That's probably one of those babes I was dating when you were in the hospital. Oh. I told him to hang up if a woman answered. Oh, you did, did you? Did I happen to mention you, the handsome intern who brought me flowers every day while I was there? Well, you just happened to mention it at least three times during every visiting hour. That's good, because <laughs> I intended to. <laughs> Like a cup of tea? Yeah, yeah, I would very I'll much. put the cup. Jeff, uh, wait a minute, I'll do it. No, no, no. No, no. You oh. just sit down and relax. Not Jeff, really. Yeah. Oh. Hello? 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 Who's that? Hung up, same as before. That's probably some kid trying to be smart. Yeah. Probably. Jeff? Oh, wait, I'll get it. Now, listen, you. Yes? 
<laughs> I beg your pardon. I thought it was the same party who was calling and hanging out. Yes, it is. It is? Remember, I said you'd be hearing from me? Who is he? Uh, it's just a client of mine. Honey, I, I left my pipe in the bedroom. Would you get it for me, please? Jeff? It's that man, isn't it? The creep. Yeah. Apparently, he's a real crank. Now, listen. If you'll just get in touch with my insurance man and tell him how much it'll cost to fix your fender... You can't buy me off, Mr. Birch. Not after what your wife said. But I told you my wife has been through a terrible ordeal. And annoying us this way only serves... That look on his face. I can still see it. No! Let it ring. Let it ring. Let it ring, Jeff. I knew I shouldn't have brought you home so soon. Oh, please, darling, please, let's not go over that again, shall we? I'm completely recovered from the accident. Even the doctor said so. Yes, physically recovered, sure. But, but honey, I know how tough this has been for you. Inside, I Please, know. please, Jeff. I know I'll get better here with you at home. I know I will. All right, baby, all right. Just that this, this character seems to upset you so. Well, he doesn't get tired of pestering us. Don't, don't worry. In the meantime, I'm not going to let him get under my skin. No, dear, don't. Of course I won't. There, Jeff. Now, just look at that. Not so much as a tremor. Dear! Honey, honey, honey. It's only the kettle. The whistling tea kettle. Oh. Oh, that's so... While you were here, Sergeant. Unfortunately, for business reasons, I can't always leave the phone off the hook so you can see what we're up against. It's been going on for three days, you say? Three days and nights. Sort of hard on the nerves, I imagine. Yes, it is. I could kick myself from here to Tibet for not having written down his license number. Sergeant, is there anything that can be done? I, I used to work for the telephone company before I was married, and I remember it was difficult to trace a call. In the movies, of course, they do it just like that. But in a city the size of this one, there's so many exchanges that it seldom ever works out. Unless, of course, we happen to get a lucky break. Sooner or later, though, we always manage to catch up with these cranks. Sooner or later. Oh, Jeff. Sergeant, my husband has a mistaken idea that I'm some sort of a frail little doll that I'm liable to crack up at the least pressure. I'll get this one. Hello? Hello. This is Sergeant Sanders of Homicide. Homicide, huh? Ain't that scary? It may interest you to know that a telephone threat constitutes a felony, and as such is the business of homicide. I'm warning you to stop. Well, if he is just another crank, the knowledge that the police have been brought in will probably frighten him more than he's admitting. In that case, he'll be leaving you alone from now on. Hello. So he isn't just a crank. Thanks to Sergeant Sanders, we were given a new phone number. And with it came 36 hours of peace and quiet. Mary improved so much that she was able to discuss taking a spin with me in the car next day. And without suffering the cold chills that usually accompanied the mere mention of automobiles. Jeff, he's got it. The new number, he's got it. Honey, that's only the doorbell. Oh. Oh. Who in heaven's name would be coming here at this time of night? Only one way to find out. Yeah. Coming. Coming.
You Mr. Birch? Yeah, I'm Jeff Birch. Good. What do you want? Want? You rouse a guy out of a sound sleep and then ask him what he wants? Who are you? With a plumber. Who do you call when you have a busted water pipe? A tree surgeon? I didn't call any plumber. You didn't? No. Well, he said his name was Birch and gave me this address. Said the rush right over was an emergency. Say, I... I don't get it. I'm afraid I do. Oh, no, honey. Don't go jumping to conclusions. Well, who else would be behind it but him? Him? Who's him? This is very likely a simple, everyday mistake. One of those... Similar names, similar addresses. Happens to you all the time, doesn't it? Not all the time, but sometimes, maybe. Ah, uh, see, what did I tell you? I beg your pardon, you, Mr. Birch. No, that's him. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, but the door was open, so I took the liberty of walking right in. Who are you? Well, me? I, I'm the funeral director you called. It's another simple, everyday mistake, Jeff. But what is he up to? What's to be gained? What don't you see? He wants to drive me out of my mind. It was my husband's idea that the man, the, the one who's been tormenting us, was watching from someplace in the vicinity. And so when Mr. Steinoff here volunteered to stay with me until you arrived, Jeff went outside to look around. Uh, since he hasn't come back yet, I, I guess he didn't find anything. Your husband should have realized that a squad car would be here within a few minutes after oh, he, he called headquarters. He did, Sergeant. But he also realized that a few minutes would be enough time for that man to get away. Why are you going to so much trouble, Mr. Steinhoff? Well, a fella gets roused out of a sound sleep, you don't take to it too kindly. Anything I could do to help nab the Joker, I was glad to do it. We appreciate your cooperation. Now, it's time I think you were getting back to bed. Sure. Good night, Mrs. Good Birch. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Steinhoff. My pleasure. Yeah, and thanks for everything. You think Jeff was wrong? You think the man wasn't watching the house? As a matter of fact, Mrs. Birch, it is my own opinion that your husband had it pegged exactly right. Yet there are some things better left to the police. It's safer. Safe? Oh. Oh, no, Sergeant. I've seen that man. He's a little tiny fella. He's not half as big as Jeff. You know, my husband was the intercollegiate wrestling champ. Oh. Surely you don't believe that nonsense about psychopaths being capable of enormous acts of strength, do you? I mean, it's... It is nonsense, isn't it? It isn't nonsense, Mrs. Birch. It's Jeff. It's Jeff. Oh. I'm from the squad car, Mrs. Birch. Is this a... Oh, Sergeant, I found this in the alley out back. One of the neighbors stuck his head out the window to say that he heard sounds of a scuffle a little while ago. Have you ever seen this before, Mrs. Birch? Yes. It's my husband's fountain. Thanks for the emergency call, Father. The other phone's been installed in your bedroom now, Mrs. Birch. Thank you. Why don't you go in there and get some rest? No, thank you. Well, have a good cry then. Shout your head off. Anything. It's not good to keep your feelings all bottled up the way you're doing. I can't do anything. Not till after he calls. Maybe he won't call. Oh, he'll call. Sooner or later, he'll find the new number at my husband's wallet. He'll call. Coffee. In my opinion, it's any comfort, Mr. Birch. I feel reasonably sure that your husband is still alive. If you're right, Sarge. There's no blood in the alley. And from the way this fellow's been acting up to now, I hardly think he's the type to go dragging around a body. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. it's no need to apologize. <laughs> 
Remember now, if that's him, just nod your head. Hello? Hello yourself, Mrs. Birch. Keep him on that line just as long as you can. Who is it? Oh, you like to play games. How do you like the game I'm playing? My husband? He doesn't like the game at all. I guess he's afraid it'll drive you... you know. Listen. Listen, mister, it already has. You're just saying that, Mrs. Birch? No. No, I'm not really. It already has. No, you're just saying that now. But it'll be true later. Wait till you feel it, Mrs. Birch. A straitjacket squeezing you in like the skin on a grape. Go, go on. Tell, tell me more. In the hot baths. You won't like them no more than I did. You just lie there, helpless, while your strength floats away with the steam. Go on. No, oh, no, Miss. Bert, you want to keep me on the phone long enough to have the call traced? No, no, of course I don't. <laughs> Listen, mister, please. Just let my husband go and we'll give you anything you want, any amount of money you want. What would I do with money? Buy a new car so somebody like your husband could scratch it up and then have people like you call me? What you did? No, thanks. Look, I'm, I'm awful sorry for what I called you. I'm awful sorry, honest, Mr. Honest, I am. No. Please, Mr., listen to me, please. No. We're in luck, Mrs. Birch. Every exchange in the city was cooperating with us, and to top it all off, we got just the break we needed. Wait a minute, I'll get my coat. Where do you think you're going? I'm going with you, of course. This is police business. I've got to go with you. Don't you see I'm the only one who can identify that man? Look, Mrs. Birch, I'm taking my car. As I understand it, automobiles play hob with your nerves. My husband's life is in danger. I'm going with you. All right, let's go. We got him, Sergeant. Where is he? In his living quarters in the back, putting on some pants. Smitty's with him. You can come in now, Mrs. Birch. Where is he? Where's my husband? I haven't located him yet, ma'am. But don't worry. This guy will talk and we'll get him down to headquarters. Mr. Steinhoff. What's going on here, Mrs. Birch? This is turning out one of the most aggravating nights of my life. You know him? That's the plumber who came over to the Birch house on a phony errand earlier tonight. You got no right to come roaring down on me at this hour. Oh, yes. Why don't you sit down, Mrs. Birch? Oh, yeah. You used this in the last half hour? Not since the call that sent me to the Birch house. He said there was a... Anybody else live here? No, only me. Less than ten minutes ago, somebody rang Mrs. Birch from this number. Well, that's crazy. Unless somebody sneaked in here while I was asleep and used the phone. That's the way it could have happened, don't you think? No, I don't. Mr. Steinhoff, please, tell us the truth. I am telling, but he won't believe me, Mrs. Birch. Is that all you have to say? Well, what else? Take him in, McCabe. I'm not lying, Mrs. Birch. By all that's holy, I'm not lying, Mrs. Birch. He, he could be telling the truth. Sure, it could be. Does it make any sense? Why would a guy slip into this particular house to make a phone call? I don't know. Why would this particular plumber come to your house to fix a busted pipe that isn't busted? Uh, there must be some connection between the two of them. You know, when I worked for the phone company, sometimes we had trouble with non-subscribers who, who cut in on other people's lines. You mean from the outside? Could that be possible in this case? Possible, but very difficult. Besides, there's a stiff penalty for anybody caught tapping with a telephone line. Well, would that matter to the man we're dealing with? No. No, I guess not. Well, then maybe, maybe Mr. Steinoff is telling the truth. Maybe he has been cutting it on his line. As a matter of fact, when we came in, I noticed a little shed just over that fence. That's right, so did I. If a guy is living in there, he's certainly close enough to tap in on this line. I know the number I can dial that'll make that phone ring back. 
If he hears it, he's bound to pick up the receiver. Shall I try to keep him busy till you see if he is in the shack? Just give me time to get across that fence. All right. Count of slow ten. Yeah. listening in, aren't you? Mister? You don't have to pretend anymore. Because I know you are. And I, I know just how you did it. I think you're very clever. I think you're very clever indeed. Mister? Let me tell you something, Mrs. Birch. Husband's right here on this card. Doped. Sound asleep. And if there's any funny business going on, he's never gonna wake up. I'm warning you. You don't have to warn me. I know. Hey! <laughs> get back here? Oh, well, you were awfully groggy after all the dope you've had, so I, I just loaded you into the sergeant's car and drove you home. You drove? Yeah. <laughs> I never even thought about it. You know that, Jeff? My fragile little girl. Now, here again is Miss Young. Adam Lindsay Gordon, an Australian poet, once said that in life there are two things that stand like stone. Kindness in another's trouble and courage in our own. Well, good night. See you next week. <laughs>